Saturday home game. Minnesota's lost 11 straight, third road game in six days. How do you guys handle being expected to win, win convincingly, being the hunted as opposed to being the hunted? Well, we can't. We just have to have the exact same approach as what we've had, and you know that doesn't change. It hasn't changed all season, regardless of what has happened with our team, what kind of streak we've been on. We've certainly been through both, and you just have to keep going and, and be resilient in in uh, in your preparation. And you know this is a very talented team that's that's been close. Um, you know, last night in the second half, Maryland went on a big run, but you know they got off to a really good start last night. Uh, lost in a single-digit game at Illinois, which is tough to do. Uh, had a chance to take a lead uh, with five minutes left against Penn State. So, you know, it's a team since they've gotten uh, Garcia back is is playing stretches of really good basketball. And, you know, those two bigs pose problems. And you see what Payne has been doing and how he's progressing uh, in his freshman year. They're playing a lot of young players, uh, you know, that are very good and getting better. Uh, Ola Joseph, I think, has a heck of a bright future. And, you know, all their young players have, have, have played very good basketball, and they continue to get better uh, uh, each game, each time they step on the floor. So it's important for us to continue uh, to go out, not get complacent. Uh, you know, we've had some time. Uh, Blaze is still pretty sore and, you know, not sure what we're going to have out of him. He'll, uh, you know, certainly continue to get treatments around the clock. And, you know, we'll see how he feels on Saturday morning. But, you know, he has not done anything in practice the last couple of days. And, you know, they pose some problems with bigger lineups. They'll play uh, battle at three. They'll play Garcia at four and Payne at five. So, you know, just have to go out there, whatever lineup is thrown at us, and continue to compete. And that's the, been the thing in, uh, that I've been impressed with with our group. It's been the message to this group to just continue to go out and do the things that have made us uh, a solid basketball team these last couple of weeks. He's fine. Yep, he has participated fully in practice. Is he? Uh, you know, you feel like you you can deploy. How did you feel like you played defense on Sunday? Yeah, I th yeah, I think defensively he's been rock solid, and um, you know the last couple games he's given us really good minutes. I, you know, the fact that he went back out there as uh, as sore as he was, I think tells you everything you need to know as as a competitor. And you know, looking back at it, uh, you know, when you saw him after the game and he had some swelling in that foot. Uh, you know, it may have been a different story, but he wanted to be out there. He wanted to be out there with his teammates. He hit a huge free throw, and you know that put us up two possessions and really kind of sealed the game for us. Uh, but you know, defensively, Jamarcus has given us a lot uh, on the ball. Um, you know, off ball, he understands our concepts, which is hard to do for a freshman. Uh, but you know, when you have a couple guys out there with he and Sam H. And, you know, Denham, uh, you know, has given us certainly, uh, you know, a lot of minutes as a freshman. you got young players out there that are giving us really quality uh, possessions, especially on the defensive end. We're going to talk to your seniors today. Um, we're talking about just the level approach to games, how critical have you been throughout the season of avoiding the, the ups and downs, especially with so many young guys that have had to Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's been – the leadership of this group is what has kept us afloat through all the adversity that we've faced. And, you know, it's all about the older guys, the seniors, are the ones that have been, uh, you know, the catalyst in that, uh, you know, in that area. Uh, Emmanuel continues to lead even, you know, in, in, for a kid to stay as positive as he has when his future ended the way it did um, or his career ended the way it did, you know, to still be out there and be positive and be a role model for our younger players. Um, you know, just show us what he, he helped us do this season. And, you know, Sam Greasel, we're very fortunate that he grew up a mile from campus. And, you know, to be able to get a guy like that to come in, <clears throat> you know, he's all about winning. And I know I talked about this when Greasel came on his visit. He didn't say one thing about how many points he think I'm going to score, how many touches am I going to get. All he said is, I want to win. I want to help uh, get the script flipped on Nebraska basketball. And that's exactly what he's done. And, you know, Derek, uh, I think this is his third senior night, <laughs> but you know he just, uh, you know the fact that we got Derek, that was the number one priority in the off season was getting Derek back, and you know we're very thankful that he did and and used his COVID year, and you know when he's been on the floor for us, you, you've seen. Uh, you know, the, the, with different lineups, with different combinations, you know, the, really the constant has been Derek and Sam, uh, you know, out there as the leaders. But, you know, he just has provided so much for our team. And, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can to help 
these guys along along the way in their in their professional careers. I think they've all got long careers ahead of them, uh, but they really deserve a lot of credit for helping us, you know, get the narrative changed on this basketball program. And you know, it's all about them. It's all about the players. If your players don't buy in, you have no chance. And these guys have been bought in since day one. You, you've used in post game as it relates to Breeze the word control in a good way. That like you feel like he's been controlling the games in the last month or so. What? Yeah. How have you seen him just grow into playing at the Big Ten level and, and getting comfortable with who he is as a player, not trying to do too much? Well, I think when when you look at it, I mean, we've come back from some pretty healthy deficits the last uh, last couple, two you know, two of the last three wins at home, and you have to have poise on the road to beat a team like Rutgers, especially when they go on a run. And you, when you have a player out there that can have control of the game like Greasel does, like Derek does, uh, it's going to help you continue to have a chance regardless of what's going on on the floor. And those guys don't let our players hang heads in the huddles. They keep them up. They keep them going. And when you have leadership on the floor and, you know, the guys, you know, continue to preach, believe what's going on, believe that we can do it, uh, you know, it makes everybody's life easier. And that's exactly what they've done. And you come back from 17 against Wisconsin. That's hard to do against a Wisconsin team when, you know, 17 against that team is like 30 against a lot of teams, uh, you know, with low possession games. And then, you know, to find a way to come back, Maryland's as hot as any team in our league right now. And we're down eight with seven minutes to go. When you find a way to come back and win, that's leadership. That's guys on the floor finding a way to keep the group together and getting it done. There's been no separation at all with this group. And that has everything to do with Sam Greasel and Derek Walker and Emmanuel Bandamel and our older players have kept this group together. Yeah, it's it's getting it, it's getting better, uh, you know. And again, I give Jamarcus a lot of credit for guarding the ball. That was such a <clears throat> huge part of what we were doing early was Emmanuel's ability, uh, you know, to stay in front of his man, uh, guarding the point guard. And Jamarcus has done a really good job of that. I thought Sam did a good job of that against Young uh, in our last game. And you know, we've thrown some different defenses out there. And you know, I mentioned this a couple days ago. You know, it's pretty rare you're going to throw three different zone defenses and, and get it in the middle of the season and be perfect. You know, it's just really designed to steal possessions out there. And when you lose not only Manuel but Juwan, and Blaze has been hurt through a lot of that, prob probably your three best defenders right there with those three guys. So we had to find a way to steal possessions. And, you know, that was what the change was designed to do. And our guys have worked at it and they've watched film on it. Uh, you know, every day we put an edit. On their uh, uh, on their laptops and, and to a man, they all go back and watch it. So it's been a, a really fun group to coach because of how bought in they've been on everything that we've thrown at them. And you know, when you throw those different defenses out there, we may play one a zone defense one possession in a game, but that's as you've seen in this league, that one possession may be the difference of winning and losing. And and that's what I've been impressed with our guys of how they've really bought in and tried to learn everything that we've thrown at them. Yeah, I, I have. I mean, you know, the one that really stands out was my uh, my team at Iowa State, which I think was my best team. And we won a Big 12 tournament championship, and we were three seed. And, um, you know, George Niang, our best player, broke his foot in the opening round of the NCAA tournament and uh, played a really good team and ended up winning that game going away. He had 27 points, I think, in 25 minutes, including 10 on a broken foot. And when I got that news, I was actually getting interviewed by Craig Sager right after the game. And right before we went on air, uh, our trainer came up and said it's broken. And you know, talk about almost having to do an interview in tears. I mean, you know, he was as good as anybody in the country at that point. And then we went on and beat North Carolina uh, in the second game to get to the Sweet 16, and ended up losing by five in the Garden to UConn, who won a national championship. So that, you know, the adversity that we faced there to still beat. You know, one of the greatest blue blood programs in, in the history of the game. Um, you know, and then listen, the, the injury, we led the league in injuries. I know I've said this my first year in Chicago, which is a bad category to lead the league in and, you know, missed the playoffs by a game. So, yeah, we have had uh, to deal with those types of things. 
you know, losing two starters like we did for the season, uh, you know, when you have uh, season ending injuries just puts a lot of stress on everybody. But, you know, again, when you have a group that competes, when you have a group that comes to work every day, you're going to continue to have a chance. And that's exactly what our guys have done. And now they've got a little bit of belief and confidence because we've had some games that we've closed out. So we just need to continue to do those things and, and hopefully we continue to play well. Yeah, I mean, we played a lot of games in a short amount of time. And when you're in a good rhythm, you do kind of like games uh, stacking on top of each other. Um, you know, the one thing this is allowing us is a little time for Jamarcus and Blaze to hopefully get healthy for the stretch run. Uh, you know, the, the buy games at the end of the year, you know, usually isn't ideal. You want that more middle of the season where you can catch your breath and then get ready for the stretch run. You know, to have it before, you know, the last couple games and then we get after Michigan State, I think we get another five days before we play Iowa in, in the finale. So, you know, it's not ideal, but you, you play the schedule that's given to you. And, you know, hopefully, again, this does give our guys a chance. Because we do have guys playing heavy minutes. And we track the, their, their loads after every game. And they were the highest they've been uh, after the Maryland game. So it does give us a little bit of a chance, you know, to step back. We had a day off, and then the next day was all skill work. Uh, we had a good film edit. Uh, that game on things we need to continue to be better at. And then the last couple of days have been all about putting in the game plan and getting ready for Saturday.